20 seconds and counting. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. NASA experienced the triumphs of the Apollo era from the 1960s to 1972, with the first man on the moon, the captivation of the nation, and support from the government and public, NASA reached its pinnacle. In the 1980s, following an era of triumphs in space exploration, the public and the United States government had their confidence in NASA shaken by various tragedies. In response, NASA sought to spark new inspiration by launching the Hubble Space Telescope in 1990. Initial tragedies due to distortions in the telescope's lens heightened NASA's already challenged public relations, but repairs to the Hubble restored the public's awe of space and provided NASA the opportunity to launch into a new era of exploration. Space through a faulty prescription, the tragedy and triumphs of the Hubble Space Telescope on the public perception of NASA. The benefits NASA received from the Apollo era were short-lived. By the end of the Apollo program, the budget for NASA had fallen from its peak by nearly $20 billion, and 66% of the American people felt that the U.S. spent too much on the space program. This was the situation for the 1976 NASA budget. During the course of approving increased budget spending for the development of the space shuttle, a new project called the Large Space Telescope was proposed. The Large Space Telescope had the following statement attached in the budget. The Large Space Telescope is one of the more important programs likely to be requested by NASA Office of Space Science in the remainder of this decade. It is essential that costs be minimized to ensure that a vigorous balanced space science program can be maintained. Following changes to decrease the cost and size of the telescope, the project was underway. The 1980s found NASA and the Space Telescope entrenched in issues. The Subcommittee on Space Science and Applications held a hearing in May of 1984 to discuss the ongoing development of the telescope. Harald Volkmer, the chairman of the subcommittee, opened the meeting by saying, Since the program first began nearly eight years ago, the subcommittee has supported the Space Telescope despite its large cost overruns, schedule slips, and management problems. These overruns were not the end, as the former director of astrophysics, Charlie Pellerin, explains. And then in 1982, it overran by an additional $1 billion, got my boss fired. I became director then when he got fired. And I had to go back to the Congress three more times to get approximately $1 billion three more times. In spite of these difficulties, the Hubble Space Telescope was scheduled to launch in August 1986 on the Atlantis Space Shuttle. But tragedy struck on January 28, 1986, when the Challenger space shuttle tore apart. The New York Times reported to the American people, Now, suddenly, after an investment of $30 billion in 14 years, and the reverberating shock of failure, we are left full of doubts, not only about the shuttles and NASA's fabled competence, but about the very fundamentals of our national space policy. The tragedy resulted in a pause on the shuttle program that delayed the launch of the Hubble Space Telescope until April 24, 1990, when the Discovery Space Shuttle would take it into orbit. And liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. Leading up to the launch, NASA worked hard to engage the public and promised exemplary images. This highlighted a key difference between what scientists were looking forward to and what the public were looking for. For people like me, a scientist, Hubble was about science. This is not run by scientists, it's run by political appointees. And for, for them, it wasn't about science, it was about repairing NASA's image after the Challenger failure. So Hubble was going to be the proof that NASA knew what it was doing and, and, and recover from Challenger. A month after the launch of the telescope, a public affairs officer invited the press to the telescope's first light test. Typically performed outside of the public notice, this test merely showed that the light sensors and the telescope worked. As a consequence, the media tragically saw the unfocused image and were far from impressed. NASA tried to assure the media that the images would get better, but by the next week, NASA reported that the scientists had discovered that the Hubble Space Telescope had a spherical abrasion. 
tragedy built upon itself when NASA's space shuttles were grounded due to fuel leaks at the same time. This sparked out rage against NASA and resulted in the Hubble Space Telescope becoming the foundation of many harsh jokes and comments. I mean, it was so bad that I didn't read, I didn't look at news at all. I didn't read newspapers. I couldn't take it. I didn't look at late night television. Tragically, the outrage didn't stop with the media. Instead, it continued into Congress, where those in charge decided that they were not willing to pursue wasting more money on a project that had already failed. The project manager for Hubble explains the story in this way. So, <clears throat> so then I uh, met with the head of NASA's appropriations, uh, Congresswoman Barb Mikulski, and she uh, spit on me and screamed at me and put her finger in my chest and said, there'll never be an appropriated dollar to fix this telescope. And the administrator of NASA was with me, Dick Truly, he said, did you hear the, the Congresswoman? I said, yes, sir, I did. So I went back to NASA, sat in my office for about an hour and decided to proceed anyway. So I, against her orders and the administrator's orders, I secretly put together a budget of $60 million and began secretly figure out how to fix the telescope with my friends that knew how to do this. Six weeks after Charlie Pellerin assembled his technical team to work on a solution for the Hubble Space Telescope, they triumphantly went public about the solution they had developed. In the meantime, other departments at NASA found ways to use computers to enhance the images. These images would be used in a campaign attempting to redeem NASA after its Hubble tragedy in the eyes of the public and Congress. During the years that followed, the public and Congress became more hopeful of the fix NASA claimed they were working on. Okay, the committee will come to order. And without objection, permission is granted uh, for coverage of this meeting by television, radio, and still photography. A month before the first servicing mission for the Hubble Space Telescope, the Subcommittee on Space held a meeting to review the upcoming project and the tragedy of what got them there. Happy to have you here, and uh, uh, today, of course, the subcommittee is going to examine uh, the status of the Hubble Space Telescope, a project uh, that's, that became a, a symbol, I'd say, of, uh, of a troubled space program when it was found to have a flawed mirror shortly after its launch. While the scientific uh, yield from Hubble has been impressive, in spite of its flawed mirror, the American taxpayer, I think, deserves to know what happened and, more importantly, uh, how we keep it from happening again and how we reacted. Under management troubles and fudge reports, the telescope had been tragically launched with a flaw that could have easily been discovered. The contractor responsible for the grinding in the mirror had to pay an out-of-court settlement for crimes. In the upcoming month, the Endeavour Space Shuttle triumphantly performed the Hubble Space Telescope's first servicing mission, allowing it to take quality pictures. In the midst of triumph, though, NASA could not escape the tragedy of the original tragedy. As a consequence of the telescope's tragedy and the triumph of resolving it, NASA found itself held to a new standard. This happened through the spotlight the media created on NASA's errors and would require NASA to continue to prove to the public that it could perform without costly errors moving into the future. Space Shuttle Endeavour on an ambitious mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope. Since the Hubble Space Telescope was launched in 1990, the telescope has both changed the field of science and the public's perception around space. Over the course of its lifetime, the telescope has had five servicing missions, allowing it to keep pace with current technology and expand its capabilities. Within the field of astronomy, more than 15,000 scientific papers have been written using the telescope's data, and at NASA, the official Hubble Space Telescope's website held 10% of NASA's web traffic. Triumphantly, the attention the Hubble Space Telescope has received from the public has not only allowed NASA to keep a high approval rating, but has influenced the way the public imagines space. This change of perspective is most evident when comparing space movies from the 1980s to modern space films. The media on the tragedy of the Hubble Space Telescope created the stage for the telescope to have more lasting triumphs on the culture, society, and NASA's public relations than the telescope would have had if things had gone to plan. And even now, as new telescopes drive to the heights of the Hubble Space Telescope, 
The technology keeps triumphantly pushing the field in unique technologies that and awe-inspiring images of the universe.